Welcome back. Today we're going to tie a really cool, uh, doesn't really have a name, we call it the Michigan Ant or whatever, because it's a style of wing that was on the original Michigan Skunk, uh, which is a really old, one of the first rubber leg flies in the world, I think in 1940 or 41 or something. But this fly is it's just something I adapted. It was just a fun fly. I haven't produced this nationally or anything like that, but it's a it's got it's really versatile if you, and it depends on how you want to tie this thing as far as like if you want to make it a wasp it's a phenomenal wasp setup if you want to make it just a flying ant or just a big carpenter ant whatever you want to do you can just adapt it to size i'm going to do this one on a size 14. Uh, i did this one originally out here for the flying ants which when when our ants colonize and they take off and they're going to recolonize they fly and you get these huge flying ants with these giant abdomens and they, they just fall in the water a lot that's where my antacid came from and other books and this one just kind of was one i was actually cleaning fly box and my crap there you know just, i don't think i've fished it in four years it just it's just been sitting around so but it was it's a really cool little fly and, and, and i think you'll like it and like i said you can adapt it for a lot of stuff different sizes and so what you're going to see is we've got this this top here which is the michigan stunks skunk style and where it comes back and forth so the wing's going to set back it's not going to this is the top obviously and when you flip it over what you're going to see is you get these distinct changes in the size of the body that is so important when you look at an ant that you see these these tapers go away and there's like nothing it's a stick between them and that's why some of the most basic thread ants on earth are still the most efficient flies there are they just show what the fish actually sees this one's going to have more stuff built in it's a dry fly. So here I've got one you can see beside here that it's, you can see when I turn that, I'm going to show you three different styles of uh, underwing because I think they're really important. If you've ever seen my antacid, you see it's got that bright gold colored underwing. I think that's the, big, the biggest trigger point to the fish on that. And they're looking up, they're seeing that wing, it's reflecting off the sun, it's sitting on the surface and it gives a little bit of flash to it, right? And so, but I'm gonna show you several ways to do this. So this one in here you can see is this hollow braid stuff here, which I'm gonna show it all in a minute, but you can see it right here. It's just this really flashy stuff. And the, the one here, one of the originals, this may be one of the originals actually, uh, that one I use scud back. And you can see I've got that goldish underwing in there. And again, you can see really distinct how that body goes away. And then you've got this little one and it's got a big head again. So that's the fly we're going to tie um, this one right here and again it doesn't really have a name so let me go through the materials very quickly uh, i'm going to be tying with olive 18 knot semper fly the hook is and 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 i i use this thread and so much so many of my flies and i use olive a lot just because i very seldom have much of it it doesn't show much color and on the head on this one there's not going to you're not going to see any of it the the head was on the hook, I'm using a 101. You could use a 100, any type of down eye. Just use a standard or 1X long dry fly hook. This is a 101.14. Um, the body is, I'm gonna use for the abdomen, I'm gonna use brown or mahogany here. This, this, this one's got most of them in it. And you can use whatever you want. I, you, most of your ants, just a, just a tip on this stuff. A lot of these ants, like the ones I showed you, have an abdomen that is uh, that kind of it's it's this uh, cinnamon caddis. It's kind of a, a, a ambery brown tan. I don't know. It's just it's really translucent when you see them in the air. So a lot of the flies that I tie here, when I was in Michigan, I would never tie this because I never saw anything like those. Out here we see that, but in reverse for almost all of your ants, the hind end is going to be brown, and so. This one's good. That's what this one here is. It's got a brown tie in, and then it's going to have a little bit of an amber middle, and then it'll have brown in the front again. But I'm going to use, again, I use that the, the cinnamon caddis, this one right here. I use that a lot on these, or the traditional, just the amber or the mahogany brown. So I'm going to, and, and that's up to you. And so then the overwing is just going to be just short, fine deer hair, nothing, what you know, whatever short hair you've got. You can do it with any kind of hair. As long as it'll give you the wing silhouette that you're looking for. The legs on this one are centipede small. I love these legs. Some of my original ones I didn't put these legs on, like on the antacid. Uh, 
and they fish just fine. I just think they look really, really cool. They, they just give it a whole new effect. And then the underwing, which I showed the flies in the very beginning, there's a ton of different ways you can do this. If you want to do, if you want to do the scud back like this here, and you'll, you know, you frequently see that kind of brownish amber underwing on, on ants when you see their wings. You kind of got that, that ambery tint to them. If you want to cut a piece of that, that's fine too. Uh, I personally like to have a little reflective value. Whoops, backwards. The hollow braid, you know, you just put a piece of this in there and it kind of gets, it's just, it's under the wing. So it's not really jumping out at you, but it does give you that reflective value. And so does some of the synthetics. That's, and by the way, there's a, this is the uh, pearl scud back. That would be about the perfect color right there. That, that color is just in this, I don't even know what the color is. It's a, it's a brownish color. There's a whole bunch of these, but this would be just about perfect for these. But and because I already tied that one, I'm gonna do how I did that. So the other thing you can use is the, I'm gonna use EP trigger fiber, this stuff here. This is going to be, it's gonna give a little bit of reflective value, not like those do, but I'm just gonna tie it in just cause it's, I don't know, it's how I tied the one I just tied a second ago. So we're gonna do that. So start with this 14, size 14, 101. And we're gonna start the thread in the middle in the middle of the hook, because we're going to build all this back here to start. We're going to start right in the middle of the hook, button up your sleeve, and we're just going to work back to, we're going to work back here, and I'm going to start right at this end of this hook, and I'm going to use the brown, and we're going to build just a little bit of a taper here, kind of a teardrop at the back. We may have to do it again at the front because we want it to, we, we, we want to be able to build against it with our hair. You'll see when we get to that. But, so again, don't, not a lot of dubbing here. Just start, especially in the beginning, right? When you're going to start this taper, don't have a big build up right there to start. And then just give yourself enough to, we're going to build a pretty good sized body. You know, the high end end is pretty bulbous. And that, again, when you build ants, I don't care how you do it, build separations. Just make it nice and separated so when you, it doesn't look like one homogenous body. It should look like three different bumps, right? And so I'm going to just work this forward. I'm going to get a little bit of a buildup right here. And I want to keep that taper at the back. Kind of went a little quick right there. Just take your time, build this thing up. I say take your time when I'm always rushing. So we don't have to have these 40 minute videos. Let me get their haters talking. But we like our haters. So we're getting that build. Didn't like that. And again, I want that to taper back just a little bit at the front. So I've got, and that's just that illusion thing. You're just trying to build that illusion of that taper reducing down. Gotcha. Okay. So where's that original? So you see, when I was talking about, we need this taper right here to come down. So it's got a skinny little butt. And now I'm going to take just a little bit of the ambery color and I'm going to tie this in. Oops, excuse me. First, I'm going to put in my wing. So I'm going to take a little bit of this uh, trigger point. I'm going to tie it in. I'm going to go forward just a little bit and fold it over. And so nice and tight wraps. We, we want this to disappear as quick as, as much as we can. Come back just a little bit past the bend of the hook. Cut it off. That's going to be your reflective value underneath. Now I'm going to take a little bit of this cinnamon caddis. I'm just going to level this out just a little bit and I'm giving myself some color break here. I, I, what it, when you see it from the bottom, there's that dark bump and there's going to be this kind of ambery middle and it just helps build that, that illusion of separation of those segments of the body. So just come forward and I want you to stop 
about a quarter of the way from the end of the hood because we're going to step the, the hair here and then we're going to set the legs and we're going to come back and at the very end and we're going to give it the black spot in the front and believe it or not i think that black spot in the front really i think it's important because they, when you look at an ant you can always see that you can always see their head and their, their head looks completely separated from everything right and so i just wanted to ran out there i just wanted to i wanted to smooth that i got to get back to the front i thought i'd have enough and you see how little I basically I could just run my thread up there. I just wanted to, I wanted to make sure that I leveled that out, that little bit of taper right there, from when I tied in the wing. It's all gonna get covered up in a second. And we're gonna tie in this the the hair wing right here. But I need to have this separation. When you look at the from the top, you can see the you can see the black right up front here, and it just it looks better if you if you finish that up. Spread this out, just make sure everything's where you want it. And I'm gonna take a little, this isn't really even short fine hair, this is just this piece of deer hair that I had off a of hide. Uh, something that wasn't even, it's not short fine, it's just a piece that I had laying around that's pretty, pretty fine, but not very short. And I'm going to be, I'm using this as, and I don't, well, I never know when these videos go out, but this is the new, what is this, the small, medium, what do we call it? Medium, small. Medium, small. And what you'll see is that I used to use the small one all the time, and I would drop it frequently. And so we had it reported, so it's the same size as the medium, but the whole, the, the whole length and everything's at the same size as the small. That's very confusing. We have a video on them because it was so confusing. But basically, the distance from here to here is the same, but it just it's a bigger piece for me to hold on to. That's all it is. Now, make sure there's not much under fur in this, but if there is, make sure you clean it out. So I'm gonna take the wing, and this takes a little bit of getting used to. Not, it's not that hard, but we need to go over top, and, and again, this is why this is such a great wasp if you want to tie it with this longer wing. So you're going to go over the top of this, and we want it to go past the, the shiny wing, right, the underwing. So as soon as you get it where you want it, just come over, and we're going to cut this nice and square. See how square that is? Time for new scissors. We're going to set it right on top of this. Oh, a little screw up on aisle one there. You're going to go right over top, leave yourself about a sixteenth of an inch, hold it nice and tight with, with your thumb, and you're, you're squeezing right here nice and tight, and just pull it down nice and tight. And we've got that little bitty bulbous head right there. And now we're going to take a kind of a big turn, and we do one right there. And that's that. And we've got to stop right, we need that to stop right where these segments, where they come together. So make sure it's all off into this, up on the sides and everything's nice and clean. Give it a little bit of a pull, move forward, and you're done. If you want to do a double figure eight there, see the figure eight right over the top of it? If you want to do that twice, that's fine. Uh, it'll hold just fine as it is. If, you, if you're not, if you're a little bit worried, put just a micro dot of glue on top of it, but I, I don't do that. So now we're going to take my legs, which I... That's sitting out here somewhere. And those micro legs, uh, they tend to go all over the place. And so I keep them in a cup. They tend to, I can't keep them in, a, in the packages. They just get crazy on me. So I'm going to take this leg, a centipede brown. On the, some of these, these got orange legs on this one. I think I like those. I think they're really cool looking. I don't think it makes it fish any different, but I just think it looks good. Take that dubbing out of the too. Sorry. Thank you. So we're going to take about an inch and a half long leg, which is way more than you need, but it's easier to work with. And I'm going to set, I like for me, I just, it, this is totally personal how you like these legs to look, right? And I, but I like to set them kind of in advance so that they're the same length in the front 
you kind of push this hair just down just a little bit and we're going to set right here with two turns not cranking you just set them on there and now but you have to have two so you can set them and you can adjust your legs so they're right on the side right and then just just a little bit of tension i like to have the front ones about where i want them to start with then i usually come in here and it just depends on what I'm tying. I cut them about the length of the wing. All right, I'm going to leave that long for a second. So now I'm going to take, and this is where we start developing this segment. We're going to, again, just very little dubbing. If you haven't watched me dub, I talk about it all the time. If you've got enough dubbing, you'll know if you let it go and it floats, if you can get it off your finger. So there it is. It's floating. That means you don't have too much dubbing. And so then just turn it in one direction. And again, I'm going right over this thread wrap. So I can't have much, I can't have much dubbing. Spin the same direction. And we're just gonna build a little bit of a segment to this, to the forward part of this thing. Get in there. So, and I, and I, I just kind of, I look at it just to see kind of come from top to bottom and when I've got it where I want it I just drop right underneath there but look at it right now so you can see there's a little bit of that hair down there I'm gonna cut that off not that it really matters so I'm gonna have a little bit of a segment and now I'm gonna do because I really think it's important I don't know I wouldn't put a, a ton of importance but I think it's it looks really great and I do think you can see it in naturals that they've always got this bulbous bug eye thing and it's black. And so I'm gonna take, now I'm gonna take some black super fine. We're done with this fly. And we're just gonna give it its forehead or its, you know, whatever it is up front there's bug eyes. And we're gonna build that right behind. Just pull your legs out of the way and look underneath it. Try not to trap any of that hair. And just kind of get right underneath here and build a little bulbous area. Yeah, it looks good. It just, it, it just, it's kind of a sexy dress up to it too. It just kind of finishes the fly off. Bingo. So that, this is a particularly, this is a, a particularly floaty fly, by the way. I'm going to cut those off just a little bit. And on real ant, I, I usually cut these a little bit shorter. I never know what they eat this fly for, whether it's a wasp, an ant, a flying ant. I don't know. But all I know is it's got a great look. You lick it from the top, it gives you these cool segments from the bottom. Same thing. I probably have to put this in something to show you. But I don't know. Can you see through that, Jeremy? Can you bit. see the underwing? Yeah, a little bit. So you can see the underwing. And it just, when you look at this, the tips, everything sets down. It, those tips of that wing set down, it's almost impossible to sink this fly. And again, you can run this fly in multitudes of shapes and colors. It's all up to you, but it's that, that Michigan skunk style wing that makes it so versatile. And again, that you don't really crank on that hair on the top because that's a, a, it's like a little bubble on top of it, all that trapped air in the hair. And so the thing's really hard to sink. You'll, I think you'll really like it. Hope you like it. Hope it helps you out.